Hey, John from Superbase here, and in this video, we're going to learn all about calling Postgres functions from our front-end applications using RPC. So why would we want to do this? Well, sometimes we have some rather complicated logic. Maybe we want to grab some values from this table, combine them with values from another table, apply some calculation, and then write the result of that to a completely separate table. This would obviously take a lot of round trips to the database. Uh, we'd also probably need some custom logic that's being performed on a server somewhere. Now that's a lot of bits to keep a track of. By encapsulating all this complex logic into one Postgres function, we can just make one request to the database and have it do all of that messy work for us and just return us the value we actually need to display in our application. This is obviously much more performant, but also keeps our application code super slim. So let's learn how. Here I have my very simple Next.js application where we've implemented auth, and so the user is able to log in. That's authenticating with Superbase. Um, and now we have our user signed in as john at example.com, and they have this button, which they can click as many times as they'd like. Um, but when we refresh this, that is resetting back to zero because we're not storing that data in the database. And so here we have our Superbase instance. We have a table for profiles, which is automatically created uh, anytime a new user signs in for the first time. And you'll see that uh, for this user that's currently signed in, they have clicked zero times. And so currently in our application, uh, we can click this a whole bunch of times. And then when we refresh, it goes back to zero. And that value is just a static value here. Um, we're just using local state uh, with use state in React. And we're initializing the number of clicks to zero. And then anytime we click that button, uh, we're just manually setting that to whatever the current value is plus one. And so let's start by pulling in this initial value from Superbase. And so we'll need to bring in use effect from React. We'll then call use effect on mount. And here we'll declare a function called get initial clicks. And that's going to be an async function. Um, and here we're going to make a call to Superbase. And so we need to uh, import our Superbase client. And so then we can say const data is going to be the result of awaiting a call to Superbase. Um, and we want to pull values from the profiles table. Um, and then we need to tell it which columns we would like to select. And so we could do star. And so this is going to bring back all of the columns. But if we have a look at our table here, we don't care about the ID. We don't care about the created at timestamp. We only care about these clicks. So there's no point uh, grabbing all of that data and sending it across the internet to our, our front end um, when we could just say clicks is the only thing we care about. And so let's just select that one column. So we also don't wanna grab all of the clicks for every profile. We only wanna grab the one where the ID is our currently logged in user. And so we can do that by saying dot EQ and then telling it which column we would like to uh, filter down by. So in this case, ID, this ID column. And we want to make sure that that ID is equal to our user dot ID. And so that's our user that we pulled in here. And so this is still going to give us back an array even though that array is only going to have that one value. And so we can say we only care about that one value by chaining on a dot single. And so now if we console log out our data, we can see what we get back. And now this is declaring our get initial clicks function, but we need to also call it. So get initial clicks. And now if we go back to our application and refresh, and we open up the console, Ignore this one. Uh, and we see we've got our object with our data um, and the number of clicks is zero. And that maps to this, which looks correct. And if we were to just change this to five manually in the database, and then we come back to our application and refresh, we should see the number five, which we do. Awesome. And so now let's display that number inside our button. So if we come back to our application, uh, once we get that data back, we want to call set clicks and pass it our data dot clicks. Oh, sorry, that should be set clicked, not set clicks. And now when we go back to our application and refresh, we see zero flash there for a second and then five pops in. And so that's initializing as that zero value. And then we're seeing the number five. And so we can stop that flash by setting this initial value to something explicit like null. And so we don't actually know how many times the user has clicked this button yet. And then when we come down to our button where we're displaying this message, 
And so if that clicked value does not equal null, then we want to display that. And we just need to put this in backticks now that it's in a ternary and then give it uh, our loading case. And so while we're actually waiting for that value to come back, what do we want to display in the button? Well, we could just make that loading. And now when we go back to our application and refresh, we'll see the text loading for a second and then clicked five times will pop in. And then if we were to click that button a whole bunch of times, we can get our number right the way up there. But then when we refresh, um, because we're not actually incrementing that value in the database, it's just gonna reset to five times. And so each time the user clicks that button, we want to increment their number of clicks in the database. Now the Superbase JS library doesn't support uh, doing this out of the box. We don't have um, any kind of statement that translates to an SQL statement where we can increment an existing number by one. We could take the number of times that the user has currently clicked the button and manually set uh, that column to be equal to whatever that number is plus one. Um, but we don't want to trust the client to be in charge of that information because then they could just set it to a super, super high number. And if this was, you know, a game or, or just, you know, something that mattered, um, then we wouldn't want the user to be able to overwrite that value. We want them to actually have to sit here clicking the number each time and only increment by one for each click. So since we want to do something outside of the, the normal operations that are supported by the Superbase JS library, we want to create a Postgres function. So let's go over to our Superbase database and again under database and then functions, we would like to create a new function. The name for this one is going to be increment clicks. It's going to be on the public schema and the return type is going to be int or int eight in this case, because we're going to return the number of clicks um, that the user now has once that number has been incremented. And so now down in our definition, again, because we're using PLPGSQL, we need a begin and an end. And then let's think about what we actually want to do here, um, because we'll need to select uh, the current number of clicks for our currently logged in user. We then want to increment that number. We want to uh, update the number of clicks to be that new incremented value. And then we want to return uh, our incremented number um, just for convenience so that we can um, then just display whatever we get back in the UI. So let's start by selecting the current number of clicks. So here we can say select clicks from our profiles table. Um, I guess it'll be public.profiles just to be more specific. And we only want to do that where the ID column uh, is equal to our currently logged in user. And so that's auth dot uid, which again is a convenience function that we get from Superbase to be able to pull that out of um, the token that goes along with the request. And now we actually want to store the value that comes back from this so that we can increment it by one. And so we need to um, declare a new variable here. So that's going to be called new clicks. And uh, the data type for this one is going to be int. We then want to take the result of this select statement and put it in our new variable. So we need to say select clicks into new clicks. And now we have that value um, stored in our new clicks variable. So then we want to increment that number. So we can say new clicks is equal to uh, new clicks, whoops, new underscore clicks plus one. Now we want to update um, the value in the database to be that new number of clicks. And so we can say update the public.profiles table. And we want to set uh, the value for the clicks column to be those new clicks. And we only want to do this where the ID is equal to our auth.uid. And this where statement is very important because if we leave a where statement off um, an update or a delete, then it will go and run this statement for every single row in that table. Um, and that's how we destroy the integrity of our data. So we've got to make sure we have a where clause and we'll put a semicolon there. And then we just want to return that incremented number. And so we can say return new underscore clicks. And now we can click confirm to create our new function. And then from the front end, we want to be able to call this increment clicks function. Um, and we can do that with a special thing called RPC. So if we come up to our increment count function, here we want to say superbase.rpc. 
Um, we can then give it the name of our function that we want to call. So increment underscore clicks. And if we were passing any parameters into this function, this is how we would declare those. But since uh, this function doesn't take any arguments, we don't need to worry about that section. We can just call it directly. And since we want the value that comes back from calling this function, we need to make this an async function and we can await the data that comes back. Oop, and I forgot my closing curly bracket there. And let's just console log out what our data is here so we can see what we get back. And if we go back to our application and refresh, we get that clicked five times. And when we click this button, it does actually increment to six, uh, but that's not linked to Superbase yet. Um, but you'll see down here in the console, um, the data that we got back is just set to that number six. And so we can then um, just take that number and pass it as our parameter to set clicked. And so now if we go back to our application, don't need the console anymore. We can refresh this and we see six times. And then when we click, it goes to seven and then eight and then nine and 10, 11 and 12. And we can keep clicking this. Um, but now when we refresh our application, that 31 times is still there because we've actually stored that value in the database. And so now we just need to handle the case where we don't actually have a user. Because if we come back to our application and we log out, um, if we refresh here, we're going to get an error because in this uh, use effect, where we're kind of assuming that there is a user. Um, so if we come across to our code, uh, that's just this line, oops, this line here. And so we could fix this um, by doing some optional chaining, um, but then we're kind of making an unnecessary request to Superbase that we don't actually need to make. Um, and so we could just wrap this get initial clicks um, in a check to make sure that we actually have a user. Because if we don't have a user, um, then it doesn't make sense for us to make a request for their clicks at all. And now this is actually highlighting um, another bug that we have with our use effect here. Um, you'll see that we've got an empty dependency array, which means that this is going to happen on mount. And so if we come back to our application um, and we have our user signed out currently, if we then log in, we're just going to see this loading state forever. Um, and that's because this logic got triggered on mount um, but then when our user changed, it didn't run again. Um, and so we actually need to add our user um, to this dependency array so that any time the state of our user changes, uh, this user effect will get rerun and then we'll go and get the initial clicks for that user. So let's confirm this is working now by coming back to our application and we can log out and we should be able to refresh and not get any errors. And then when we log in, we should see loading and then clicked 31 times. So just to quickly recap what we went through in this video, um, we wanted to be able to click this button and it to increment um, the number of times our user has clicked in our Superbase database. And since this logic is a little bit more complex than just a basic update statement in SQL, this isn't something that our Superbase JS library supports by default. Therefore, we needed to create a Postgres function. And if we have a look at what this function is doing, we're declaring a new variable to store the new number of clicks that we have. We're then selecting the current number of clicks from our profiles table. Uh, we're incrementing that value. We're then updating that value in the database and then returning that incremented value. And so then from our front end, we can call this function using RPC with the Superbase JS library and just need to pass it the name of our function. That then gives us back the return type of that function, which in this case is the number of new clicks and then we're setting that to our clicked variable. And this allows us to click this button as many times as we'd like. And every single time that's going off and calling that Postgres function in our Superbase instance and then returning us the new value that should be displayed as the number of times that user has clicked the button. And that's how easy it is to use RPC to call our Postgres functions from our front end application. And again, this allows us to abstract away some complex logic. We might have a lot of steps and really all our UI cares about is the result at the end of that. So we can use RPC to call a Postgres function there. Or maybe we just have a complex SQL statement that we want to perform that maybe the Superbase JS library doesn't support yet. And so we can put that in a Postgres function and call it from our front end using RPC. If you liked this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't, just hit the dislike button twice. It'll send us a message saying, don't create this kind of content. If there is anything you'd like to see, make sure you leave us a comment. 
I also recommend you check out our YouTube channel, that's slash C slash Superbase for more awesome videos just like this one. Give us a follow on Twitter and come and join our Discord. We would love to hear from you. I also recommend if you want to go a little bit deeper with any of this, um, I've created a free egghead course called Build a SaaS Product with Next.js, Superbase, and Stripe. In this, we go from an empty project all the way through to having a real-life project in production that can earn you real money. So I recommend you check that out. Thanks. See ya.